We're glad to know you're still there. It's still the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And it's time now to go to the press and see what the headlines on our national dailies are. Uh, this morning, we're being joined by Mr. Tunde Kolawole, a legal practitioner. He'll be joining us from Lagos here. Good morning and welcome to the program, Mr. Kolawole. Good morning, my brother. Thanks for having me. It's always Hope a pleasure. Hope you have a great night. Yeah, thank you. Okay, um, <clears throat> we're beginning with uh, Nature News this morning. And Nature News leads with the headline, State governors rally to avert impending food crisis in Nigeria. And the writer is, ask CBN to transfer anchor borrowers funds to Agric Ministry. Now, I saw uh, in the papers, uh, was it yesterday or so, where uh, someone in the presidency was saying that the federal government is working really hard to make sure that they reduce the prices of food in Nigeria. And I, and I was just laughing anyway. But I would like to know what your thoughts are. The state governors are rallying to avert impending food crisis in Nigeria. What do you think? Yeah, uh, honestly speaking, uh, let's thank God that uh, the governors are now getting to be aware that there is an impending food crisis uh, in the country. Uh, this is a thing that has been in the office for quite some time now. And I can recall that through the media houses and some other non-governmental organizations that are talking about uh, this. But lo and behold, the governors never saw any challenges uh, in that area. Now that we are aware, we hope to do something about it. But we must first and foremost say that the governors are responsible. If there is food crisis in Nigeria, the government should be held responsible for the food crisis. What do I say this? We have always emphasized that the local government are the bedrock of production of food in this country. They are also our first line of defense against insecurity. But no and the old, almost all the governments in the country have destroyed the local government, such that the local government has not been able to guarantee peace and security in their respective domain anymore. Also, we correct that uh, the local government needs to have very vibrant uh, agric extension services which can provide to the people in their respective community. All those things have also been uh, uh, well. So, in the aspect of security, in the, in the aspect of the very robust uh, agric extension programs, all the people, all the farmers in the respective local government are in order and abandoned farmers. So, there is a crisis in that area. So if you are not talking about uh, identifying the challenges of food crisis in the country, then we should thank God that they are now getting to realize that they have charged their responsibilities in respect to that area. Okay, now the, 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 the request is that the anchor borough funds should be transferred to the Agric Ministry. Do you think it would make it more effective? No, I really, I really don't think so. I would have preferred that the anchor program program should be transferred to the respective cooperative societies that we have uh, in the country, especially the farmers' cooperative uh, the society. You find that when that uh, money was delivered in the Central Bank of Nigeria, with the Central Bank of Nigeria, you find that it's not many people have no business with farming that are being given that uh, facilities to do all manners of things. Either to do a foreign exchange market here or to import a toothpick and other useless things into the country to sell and make a, a jumbo profit. Again, too, at the time when that money was thrown aside with the commercial banks in the country, too, the farmers weren't having access to it, they weren't getting values uh, for their money. I mean, they had no access to some of those uh, uh, money. And then uh, the cost at which the money is borrowed. And the bureaucracy to really access that funds and all that was such that the ordinary farmer in the country find it difficult to be able to access such funds. So I will recommend, I will prefer that the funds be transferred to the respective uh, cooperative societies in the country, especially the farmers' cooperative society, where the bureaucracy of access, where uh, the politicians will not be able to influence those who would uh, uh, be getting those uh, money. Transferring it to the CBN, to any of these commercial banks and all that, might not be the appropriate solution. 
for those who should have been half access to this money to have access to them. A very key of the two. Okay. Well, um, we've also seen on Nature News here that Niger State or Niger Government plans a committee to oversee inland waterways safety. They are planning committees, not like they have set up the committee. They are planning to have this committee uh, to ensure uh, waterway safety. You know that in recent times we've heard of boats capsizing uh, and a lot of people dying and all that. And we were expecting that something would be done immediately to make sure that these things don't happen again. But right now, the state is thinking about setting up a committee that will now go back and sit and uh, uh, think about how to make the waterways safe. I don't know what you think. Mm, there have been a lot of issues with respect to all these inland waterways and then the coastal um, uh, waters in the country. You recollect that during the Vavangira era, uh, there was a law that was made by the military center of uh, President Bayer Vavangira when they wanted to have access to choice properties to the coastal lands that are bordering the oceans and all that. The Vavangira administration made a law transferring all the coastal lands and some of these waterways to the federal government. And with that, they were able to attack uh, the land in Osborne Road, I mean along Osborne Road, and some of these other choice properties uh, in Lagos State. Ever since then, there have been issues with regard to some of these other waterways and in the coastal lands and northern. I recall that the Lagos State government, I think, took the federal government to court and all that. I'm not too sure that they won that case. I know that decision was really taken by the Supreme Court. Um, with regard to some of these inland waterways and water bill, which has now said that uh, the federal government is uh, in charge, is the owner, one should be responsible for what happened along the inland uh, the waterways and some of these other coastal regions. So I should think that it was some of these decisions of our courts and all that that have put a lot of restraint on what the state government or what the local government could have done in these uh, areas. But that notwithstanding, the thought is that uh, you cannot stay in Abuja and be protected to what happens uh, along the Pamin, within the towns and local leaders in the Korodu, in Bayesa, and in Yenakwa. Uh, Both the state government and the federal government should sit down and find solutions to how we can manage our inland water with our coastal, uh, our coastal water so that both the state government, both the local government and the federal government could have the benefits of those rivers and also be able to provide adequate security along those rivers. The federal government has made a, a bold move in the sector of this area. The president has said that they are going to be setting up a kind of marine police, notwithstanding that the Nigerian police currently has a marine a police, which might be as not um, have been doing too well in that area. So if the federal government is setting up uh, the marine police so as to be able to provide security and ensure that people no longer uh, drown or get killed when they are committed along the waterways and then the coastal regions and what happens, it will be a welcome development and a good opinion. It could be a supplement to what the Nigerian police already uh, had. And if the Nigerian police are already not too active in that area, I should think it's not impossible that because they have never had the necessary resources and they have not been given the political will to be effective along the, those areas. Then, even though the waterways and the coastal waters will belong to the federal government, I am not too sure that there is any law in Nigeria that will send the local government, that will send the state government provide, from, from providing security for their people who use this waterway, who commit along this uh, waterway. So if the Niger government is trying to establish a uh, kind of security... Uh, you have one minute. I think it should be a welcome uh, uh, development. But setting up a committee is uh, not too cheery. For how long will the committee uh, uh, sit? We already have a blueprint. We are already in not documented as regards what to be done in this area. So rather than merely setting up a committee, 
Pe noi de-am să-i comeți și zău să pusi să-i stă toată pe care îi ofă pe Marin Polis, în control și-au avut azai, sau din Sfera Polis, la Sfera Comeți. Well, I do hope that um, the, the government will do something fast because I'm not even thinking about uh, what kind of safety they are going to get except for the fact that they should make it uh, compulsory for people to have life jackets and for the boats or, or ships uh, that uh, run on the water to be safe enough for the people to commute in. Because we've been seeing 100 and something people drowning a, at one point, 50 something people drowning at some point, even if it's one life that is lost because of carelessness of uh, whoever is operating this, then uh, something should be done about it. So, apart from policing the waterways, there should be something, a legal framework or something that will make sure that people don't uh, die unnecessarily. Because a lot of these people who go on these waters do not have life jackets, they don't have these vests to give to their. Uh, passengers, even though they are making so much money out of it. And you also discover that it could be a little bit um, uh, cheaper for people to travel on water. So why don't the government just look into it, first of all, and see what can be done? Maybe float uh, more boats than the private ones and have all the things that are needed on these boats and how it is being operated or they are being operated. Because needlessly losing people is not good, if you ask me. Whether it is owned by federal government or local government or state government, but whoever is closest to the people should be able to do something, especially the state government, because now we can safely say there is no local government. So the state government can do what they need to do and see to it that uh, lives are not lost unnecessarily. We'll just take um, uh, some of these headlines, just call, um, read them out, uh, and uh, uh, Mr. Kolaole will be rejoining us in a moment to do justice to some of the headlines as time will permit us. But for now, still on uh, the uh, Nature News, we have a story, Producers, Workers, Protest Ban of Sachet Alcoholic Drinks. You know that the Lagos State Government at some point uh, made this pronouncement that there will be no longer any sale of uh, sachet drinks in uh, the parks especially and then uh, it didn't seem to work because uh, you still go to the parks and the first people that you see there selling are the people with this sachet alcoholic drinks they wake up like 3 a.m i don't know if they don't sleep anyway but no matter how early you go to a park you'll see them they are the people who are selling not the food not any other thing but the alcohol that is what they sell and this is going to be banned and we know that something needs to be done about the drug abuse uh, uh, problem that we have in Nigeria as well but the beginning uh, for the federal government or for any government in Nigeria is to talk about um, uh, banning alcohol I'm just I'm just asking what, what if uh, they only other alternative is to go back to drugs even the people who did not want to be part of you know the people that abuse drugs and i'm not i'm just i'm not just a, a scaremonger i'm just i'm just saying now have we looked at the typical reasons why these things are flourishing the the sale of alcoholic drinks the sale of uh, illicit drugs and all that why are these things even flourishing is it something that we can we can flush out or we are just going to uh, begin to think that we are finding solutions when we are at this point. You know, you're banning alcohol at the parks. Do you think there may be another alternative if you ban this? You say sachet and uh, little bottles, they are the ones that are going to be banned uh, everywhere else. So you want people to be buying the big bottles now and because they may not be able to afford it, maybe it will reduce and all that. Does it really work? Why is it that people like drinking this alcohol like that? Is there a problem that needs to be solved and all that? I'm just asking. I'm not saying uh, there's something to it. I'm just asking. But it's a good thing that it is going to be banned. Let's hope that uh, there will be more sanity on our streets. There will be more sanity uh, among the people uh, now. Okay, uh, if you move to the Punch newspaper, we also have interesting headlines. Uh, Nigerians spent $98 billion on foreign trips education in 10 years. Nigerians, 
Is it the entire Nigerians? What percentage did the politicians have, the public uh, office holders? What percentage of this 98 billion did they have? Because if you say Nigerians, it groups everybody, including me, into that group. And I don't know if I even went to Cameroon or Niger Republic or Bene Republic, even though some of these places are trackable. You can trek to these countries. But uh, I didn't go. And a lot of people watching me right now did not go. So who are the people who spent the 98 billion on foreign trips, education in 10 years? So who are these people? Um, I can't afford to send my child to, to Cambridge or, or any other institution outside the country. I, a lot of Nigerians cannot do this. So who are the people who went to get education from foreign countries? Who are the people who were making trips to foreign countries? So what percentage uh, do these people have? Who, we should have a rundown of this kind of thing so that we know the people who are making other countries rich and Nigeria poor. Uh, let's begin to know these things. Data is, is everything nowadays. So we, when we know this, we will know what to do about it. But they, the information came from the CBN. CBN gave us that information. And the writers on that story are uh, that CBN says it can't stabilize exchange rate alone puts annual food imports at $15 billion. Senate summons Cardoso grill CBN governor uh, on Friday over forex crisis economic challenges. I hope something good comes out of it. Um, IOCs withhold fresh investment over $1.3 billion debt. That is also from the Punch newspaper. International oil companies withhold fresh investment over 1.3 billion Naira debt. Remember that the federal government or the CBN has said that uh, they have cleared the backlog of uh, debts owed whoever. And they said some of these uh, monies were not legally uh, owed the people. They saw some discrepancies and the federal government is not obligated to pay this money. And I'm sure that's the issue of uh, bone of contention right now. And the IOCs are withholding fresh investment. They are not ready to invest anymore because of that 1.3 billion Naira debt that is being owed them. Naira weakens at official market. Banks sell $584 million. Uh, that is another issue. Uh, on, in another story, we saw that um, the Naira uh, gained a little bit in the official market, but in the parallel market, it did not. In fact, it ended uh, even lower than it should. So we do not know. Maybe in the next two months, we might be selling the, or buying the dollar, one dollar for 2,000 Naira. Nobody knows how it's going to be. So you have, if you have 1,000 dollars right now you have like 1.5 million uh, naira uh, it's it's crazy tinubu returns orders emergency meeting on food crisis okay i hope something good comes out of it but um, i can safely say nothing good will come out of it because you're talking about food crisis what i've seen over the years okay let's say let's hope that something good will come out of it but what i've seen over the years is that when they're talking about uh, reducing the price of items, they start with food items. Like, you know, everybody will say, you just went to the farm, you gathered these things, and there's no reason why these things should be costly. Without taking into consideration what is being put in to make sure that this food comes out so that people can buy. Now a bag of rice is going for 70,000 Naira. And it might get to, because Easter is coming, uh, Lent will begin on the 14th of uh, February with uh, Ash Wednesday and then about the 30th of March or so will be Easter. Easter is another time where rice goes up just like Christmas. So who knows how much it will be sold for. A bag of rice may cost up to 80 or 100,000. Nobody knows what it's going to be. So have you considered what the farmers have to go through every day to produce one bag of rice? You have never considered the herbicides that go into it, the fertilizer that goes into it. Um, if any farmer is using a, a, a machine, maybe like a, a thresher or a harvester or even a tractor to plow the land to plant this rice, it is on personal basis. You are going to spend money on your own, no subsidy of any sort. You are going to do it um, 
uh, out of your pocket. It, it's not like in those days where the local government had all these things, you know, uh, around, and you just need to go there, tell them what you're going to do, or you need it for, and no matter what you pay, it is going to be subsidized. No, that's not what is happening right now. It's either you take manual labor, or you use your money and get a tractor to come plow the land, and it is not cheap. So if you consider all these things, after that, you harvest this thing, you take it to the mill, <clears throat> if that is what you do, you take it to the mill and the mill will cost another thing because the mill operator knows that to buy diesel, to run his, uh, uh, his, his uh, what do they call it, his mill, his rice mill, is a, a very costly venture. So he ups the price. So if you were getting a bag for, let's say, 5,000 Naira, to mill it back for 5,000 Naira. Now it could be 10,000 Naira. You have not considered the transportation, where the drivers will be talking about how they buy fuel and all that. So it is maybe up by 200%. So you factor all these things in. And then when you form a committee and they say they go to the market, in the, in the days of um, the military, it used to be price control. The army will just come into the market, flog everybody, and if you have 10 naira, you could buy a bag of rice for 10 naira because uh, they are in the market. They flog everybody, people will be running and leaving their wares. Uh, some of these they will be giving out for free. Some things that should cost up to 1,000 naira will be sold for like uh, 10 naira or 50 naira. But it doesn't always work that way, especially in a democracy. So if you're talking about food prices, this is the time farmers uh, are taking care of or are preparing the ground to plant because the rains will soon uh, kick in and then uh, some other things will be planted uh, at the beginning of the year. So sometimes in March, April, a lot of farming will begin until it gets to like November of the year. So when you're thinking about these things, think about how to give soft loans to farmers, think about how to make fertilizers and every other thing available to the people who are farmers. Don't think about going to the market and make, saying that you are going to cut the prices. Okay, uh, I don't know if um, Mr. Kola Wole has joined us again to just take for like uh, three minutes or five minutes. Uh, Mr. Kola Wole, are you there? Quickly. Yes. Yes, I'm back. I'm back. Okay, sorry yeah, that we had to go. Uh, yeah. Cut into the issue of this uh, farming just talked about. Mm. Am I audible? Yes, you go ahead. All right. So as I was saying, uh, let's also point out that uh, all over the world, farming is becoming very, very uh, unattractive yeah. uh, to most people and to the young people. Mm. Uh, not, to, not this last week, farmers in France, they back on massive, massive demonstrations um, all over France, blocking roads and northern. Uh, talking about the hardship they are facing in terms of even being able to meet the cost of their of family. Mm. Farmers in Germany also embarked on massive, but in fact, the whole of Europe, most farmers in the whole of Europe embarked on uh, uh, the demonstration rallying back and blockages and what have you uh, this is last week. The point out was that the uh, family is no longer becoming profitable, it is also not becoming farming, it is becoming very, very unfortunate because it is people. So that farmers are even committing suicide in Europe and also selling their land their back on some other things and all that. So the truth of the matter is that to attract people to farming and make those who are there you now stay there, you need to put a lot of incentives and give them a lot of subsidy True. for them to for, for us to be able to retain them uh, and these farmers uh, in the different farms. The alternative would be for humanity to begin to work on um, on capsules, on supplements, and what have you. Such that uh, on a daily basis, the nature of what we eat becomes different. Human beings are only required to swallow one capsule a day, and all the food nutrients that they will require will be derived from that um, uh, capsule or nutrient that they drink and what have you. As it is today, if farming is becoming very, very unattractive, and people, farmers are committing suicide, people no longer want to farm in Europe and America. Where there are even more incentives, where there are more sources to farming and all that, you will know that to get people to farm in this part of the world with all the challenges that are, we will become more difficult for an Aquarian task. It's not impossible. So we have two alternatives massive, massive subsidies in the area of farming, or the scientists begin to work on food supplements 
artificial food that people will now eat as many farmers will no longer be required to provide us the kind of food that um, we now eat as a human being. Those are the two uh, ways in which I think some of these food challenges are the that we are facing. But the humanity is facing all over the world uh, that could be resolved. Yeah, well, I hope something positive will be done about that. And uh, um, let's, let's move to the Guardian newspaper right now. Um, we've been told about an egg a day. Uh, that's, that's a source of protein that everybody needs. But inflation, price hike, push an egg a day diet beyond Nigeria's reach. That is what a headline, or the leading headline in the Guardian newspaper right now. An egg a day. It's not a practicable thing, according to this report. What do you think? Yeah, uh, you know, clearly, egg is the cheapest uh, means of uh, having access to, to protein. And then uh, when we want to supplement the food or the diet of the children, we just uh, proceed to give them um, one egg a day, give them um, a milk. It could come in form of... Um, a tea or whatever, or in the beverages and what I do. And then we are that or two at least to supplement our protein in the absence of uh, the expensive uh, revenues that we have in the market today, in the absence of the opportunity to rear gold, to rear sheep, to rear uh, uh, pigs, and uh, some other beds uh, in our local, uh, localities and all that, then it becomes a very useful means of supplementing uh, our protein and uh, also know, or you also require to know, that uh, poultry feed can so expensive now that most farmers are unable to purchase or feed their beds with the right quantity of uh, poultry feed. And because if they have to do that, the value will not be able to meet their uh, cost of uh, their production. So all of them begin to find ways and means to supplement or to reduce the food consumption of the animals and beds. And, and when you do that, you don't get the adequate yield that you require or that you could get from this bed and all the quantity of meat and milk that those animals uh, could produce. So, uh, we need to really wake up and find solutions to this myriad of problems with regard to producing the right quantity of eggs. And also know that egg is not merely used as a, I mean, as a metal on the food table. There are some products that are produced that you require to put uh, eggs in there as raw material to be able to produce some of those uh, of uh, uh, products. So it's a very difficult situation that we are found ourselves. But these are also problems or challenges that are not insurmountable. If we really put our eyes to the plow, we might be able to solve some of these uh, problems. Yeah. My fear is that everywhere you're seeing pockets of uh, protests here and there in Niger State the other day, Delta State, in so many other places, people are protesting here and there. And it begins like that. Like my people say, uh, a fire starts small before you know it, it has consumed a whole area. And all the headlines or almost all the headlines here are bordering on hardship. Uh, we have these regional groups hinge coup on hardships, failure of democracy. And then we also have bishops, northern elders, lament rising inflation, hardship, uh, security, insecurity. We have Nigeria, Burkina Faso, four orders to experience food crisis till May 2024. And then we have Lagos TUC orders protest ban on sachet alcohol, site potential 500,000 job losses. Uh, let's comment on that. Yeah, um, I want to apply to the labor union and to the industry to please work with the labor state government so that we can find solutions. So, this is a and then the plastic that meet our environment. They are not uh, genetic, they, they come to the political the environment. There are to be some ways and means to really package some of these products that come in um, packets. And all that. And then there could also be a procedure to really reform and to call to recall back all those factors and parties that are used to produce some of these uh, uh, products. Uh, rather than begin to embark on trying to push the to push back the hand of the local government to clean up the environment. All over the world, plastic and factors, the plastic factors and, 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 and water are becoming a name, not just to the environment, but also the river yeah, that we have uh, all over the world and also the ocean. And there are not machinery 
according to society. There are not enough machineries now for us to use the river to be used to clean up the ocean, the river. That is going to clean up the environment in which you don't want this plastic and waste and, uh, and such as and all that. So we need to really sit down and compare to the government to try to change to the plastic and such as pollution that are very prevalent in all our environment, in our river, and then in our ocean. Okay. Uh, just a final question. I'm very, very, very fast about it, please. Naira Freefall. CBN blames rising number of Nigerians cooling abroad and medical tourism. They say that's the reason for the Naira Freefall. Do you agree? Very fast, please. <laughs> well, I agree. But the question one should ask the CBN people is that who are the people who send their children abroad for education? Mm. Who are the people who go on medical tourism? Is it you and I? Not only the people in the city, the people in government, which is the big civil servants and the people in the, the big army officers, big naval uh, officers, big police officers, who children are schooling across. Take the, 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 the statistics that we say, not in the book, the children who are employed in the city, they are all children of the big people in the side. They are also children, they are also mostly children of people, I mean, they are school across. If the CBN is saying it is people who engage in medical tourism, people who school abroad that are causing this, thing, then they should stop pointing and kissing finger at all. They should find the finger that they say and find the way and find the way to stop their own children from traveling abroad, to stop the medical tourism that is prevalent according to the general and all that. All right. Uh, this is where. The only dog is bad name in order to hang it. <laughs> This is where we have to uh, wrap it up. Uh, Mr. Kola Wale, thank you so much for being a part of our program. As usual, it's a pleasure. It was a pleasure having thank you. Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. Thank you for coming. Okay, we've been talking with Mr. Tunde Kola Wale, a legal practitioner here in Lagos State. We were looking at the headlines this morning. We'll take a break, and when we return, we'll be talking or we'll be looking at our first hot topic, which is on female genital mutilation. Stay with us.